attention, girl, I know you. But you're everything I want in life. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my channel. I am Luke. Thank you very much for watching. Situation in today's video is this. I've had a few people say they want to see uh, more footage and more of my day-to-day -day life and like job rather than keep cutting it. Where's he going? So, uh, I mean, there will be cuts in this video, but it's literally just one job. I've just been loaded. And uh, we're going to a place which is 60 miles away. It's going to take about an hour and 50 minutes to get there. Um, and then we're going to tip there. And that's going to be it. But I'm going to try and do as much footage as I can on the way there. Paperwork starting to flow. He's making a hash of that. Go back a little bit just to help him out. Now I can't get past because his trailer is sticking out. Um, so yeah, we're um, we're in Southampton right now. I'm going to head out of Southampton onto the M3, uh, and then we're going to where are we going? Going to Finch, Finch, Finch Hampstead, Finch Hampstead, something like that, Park Lane. So that's where we are going. He's beeping his own because he can't, because Matey Boy ain't opening the gates for him to let him in. So as soon as they open the gates and let him in, I can crack on. Fucking right. Finally moved out of the way. See, so yeah, as I was saying. I want to try and make this video a single a single job video. This is what I would expect in a single job. This place in Southampton where we're getting loaded out of is an absolute nightmare to get a lorry in and out. You'll see in a second there's like cars either side. I mean there's vans coming down at the moment so I can't go anywhere because I'll be in their way. They'll be in my way. Stay on the left. Don't you start indicating now. Yeah, you, you sort of have to go out as wide as you can here to get round, and even then you're quite tight for the cars. And all the way up here it's quite sort of single track sort of thing because there's cars on the left. So it is a bit of a nightmare getting up here, especially when you've got lorries to pass each other. Hopefully we get out of this area before that occurs. There's a car there, is he going to stop? He certainly is. But these aren't. They're perfectly entitled not to stop. Just obviously it holds us both up for a little bit. Right. I don't like being an aggressive driver, but you have to be a bit aggressive down there, otherwise you're not gonna get out. Not gonna get out at all. So that bridge is called Itchen Bridge. Uh, I found out yesterday you can actually climb up the steps, steps. You can go up and actually have a walk. So next time I sleep here, I'm going to go and have a walk right down to the bridge and like literally cross the river. Well, I would probably go across the river, but I go halfway up and I sleep just over there on the left, or I have done, did last night as well. There we go. A bit bumpy this part. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Momentum is king. No momentum equals no movement. Momentum is king, but I reckon I can let that bus through and keep momentum.
There we go. So yes, hopefully you're all all right. Thank you very much for watching the last three vlogs I did. They are uh, part one of three and two of three and three of three. Got loads of uh, comments and reviews on them, so thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Lots of tips as well people are giving me. Um, like that website, hgvparking.co.uk. That's come in handy already. I had to take a delivery to, to Newbury and I parked um, at a shell garage on the way up on the A34, I think. And it's literally 12 minutes away from where I needed to drop off in the morning. So that's very handy. But uh, so far, it's the only time I've used it, but I definitely am going to use hgvparking.co.uk in the future or dot com whatever it is you just type in the postcode of where you're going or, or the city that you're in or whatever and it sort of lists a few places um, and they appear to be reviewed by a lorry driver because um, some of them say uh, good parking quiet pub around the corner <laughs> so it's, uh, <laughs> hopefully the reliable reviews personally I don't drink but I do, I, I, I have drunk and I do sometimes drink, but very rarely do I drink, especially if I'm driving the next day at a lorry. I might have something over the weekend, but that's about it. Keep momentum, but let him, oh no, red light anyway. It's gonna flash him through. So this is exactly where I was, I think, when the police escort passed me. No. No police escort happening today by the looks of it. So we got 59 miles, one hour 38 minutes, because apparently there's 15 minutes worth of traffic on the M3, according to my TomTom. -tom. So um, I'm going to be in a bit of traffic later, which is not unusual. There's, I get fed up with waiting around, as you well know. I also get fed up with traffic. As long as I'm moving, I'm happy. <laughs> but yeah, I don't like sitting around doing nothing. Red lights annoy me as well. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. So, um, I did get some, I got some footage of me closing my things up. Mate, you need to get off the road. Yeah, I got um, like side flaps, I'm gonna call them, on, on this trailer. And um, I got some footage of me just closing them up just now. But hopefully I can get some footage of where I'm going with the forklift taking it all off again, all the bags. I'm going to a Travis Perkins. All clear. He thought I was a bus. Let him through. Like I said, I like to think I'm a considerate driver. I do let people through. Especially when you're not in a rush. It's Friday today, I'm on my last run. When I delivered this. Well, sat down saying I'm gonna be there at half past 12. Um, and then it's about an hour away from home or so. So I could be in the yard before three o'clock. So I'm not in a rush at all. Got enough driving time as well. So it's all gravy, baby. It's all gravy. I don't know how long this vlog is going to be. But it's not going to be two hours long. Um, but yeah, let, let me know what you think. A few people now have suggested that with my GoPro right here, that I've sort of flipped the image round. So when I look left, it looks like I'm looking left. Like right now I'm looking right, but to you it looks like I'm looking left. It is give way to the right. I gotta give way to you. So yeah, when I, when I look here to the right, it looks like I'm looking left. To you it does. So if I flip the image round, when I look right, I will then look like I'm looking right to you. The only problem with that is it's going to look like I'm driving a left-hand vehicle. 
So let me know if you like that idea and in the next vlog I'll try it out. Even if I try both of them out in the same vlog and you sort of like decide which one you want. But I'm not gonna do it unless a few more people sort of suggest it. If you like it how it is, then let me know. If you think I should try at least try it, then let me know. I'm, all, I'm always open to trying out new things. So we got bulk bags on. Should be about 34 bulk bags. We're going to a Travis Perkins and they're normally pretty good, Travis Perkins. Normally switched on, normally tip quite quick. I'm starting to do enough companies now where I can sort of rate who's the best. Not that I'm going to, oh come on. But um, Travis Perkins is definitely up there in terms of how quick they turn you around. They're probably the most strictest as well in terms of health and safety. Sometimes you turn up on site and you've got a park in, right in front of a sign or they move a sign right in front of you that says no moving during offloading. I've also been to one Travis Perkins site where uh, I had to put like a, a wheel cover on my wheel and again it said do not start engine or move while being loaded. Which is all fair enough. But the thing is, you're not actually allowed in the cab when you're being uh, offloaded. So I can't be in the cab to turn the engine on and move in the first place. Also, they use wheel trucks. I've been to a place where they've used wheel trucks. So I'm out of the cab, sign in front, cover on the wheel, wheel trucks on the, under the wheel, and I'm outside the cab. I don't think it can get much safer. They must have had some serious problems in the past to require that much health and safety. Definitely. I went to a site earlier in Salisbury um, and I won't mention the company but he, the guy, who, the banksman who, who uh, like reversed me in would not let me do a blindside reverse but he's perfectly happy for me to go up the road and do a dodgy turn in up the road which is probably even worse because there's no one to stop the traffic for me but he wouldn't let me in unless I turned around. So I had to go do a, not a dodgy turn round, but a turn round with no help further on up the road, rather than just do a blind side reverse with him stopping the traffic. So that was a bit silly, but never mind. Still quite a bit of traffic up ahead. Apparently a bit of traffic in four miles time. So what I do is I film until I get onto the motorway might do a bit of filming on the motorway and then when I get off the motorway I do some more filming again. This vlog could be an hour, could be an hour long, could be sort of 45 minutes long, I don't know. But um, hopefully it's going to be an adequate length for you and you're not just going to be seeing cuts here and there, I'm doing the same thing. Just left Southampton, I'm heading towards French and Shensham Shum Shumming or whatever. <laughs> I don't know where it is, I don't know where I'm going. It's follow sat now. I'm heading toward Reading is where I'm going. It's an RG postcode. Stay green, stay green, stay green, stay green. Nah, that's orange, I made that. Definitely made that. Don't worry, it was not red. Right, M27 here we come, M27 onto the M3, loads of driving time, loads of traffic ahead as well, it's all on the M, looks like it's on the M3 as we join up. We'll find out. It's 
it's all about momentum in this thing. When you're fully loaded, if you come to a complete stop, it's, it's harder to pull away. Like, we're going up a hill now, so I'm doing 25 miles an hour. 27. Twenty-eight, twenty-seven again, twenty-six. I just change gear. <laughs> twenty-seven. So yeah, got to try and keep the momentum going. Apparently, there was one minute's worth of traffic three miles ahead. Go on then, if you're so clean, you're not going to overtake. No, okay. Thought he was going to go and overtake me then. I need to get into this lane. Now officially on the M27, heading north. Is it north? Yeah, it's, it's north. Right, I'll see you when the uh, when we get a little bit closer. Yeah. Like the attention, girl, I know you. Know you. But you're everything I want in life yeah. We're fighting danger like Kung Fu The love I feel is deep inside The others don't matter We're finally free of all the traffic! Woo! Let's crack on, foot down. Let's go, go, go! Officially off the motorway, we're on the A327. That white van just now, just before we got off the motorway, overtook me. I flashed him in, because he was overtaking me very slowly. And then he saw a speed camera, an average speed camera, which clearly said not in use, slowed right down, and then he wouldn't speed up again. Just got in my way. He, the way I see it, he overtook me, got in my lane, and then slowed me down. So annoyed me a little bit but never mind never mind anyway we're off the motorway now like i said we're on the a327 and now we've got about nine miles nine and a half miles of country driving to do so and again you've you guys have said you really like the uh the driving side of it and seeing what i see so uh here we go you're gonna see nine and a half miles worth of countryside lots of bumpy roads as you can see speed limits some bendy, uh, bendy roads. Hopefully, no low bridges. No, if there was any low bridges, my sat nav would have told me by now. No low bridges, just plenty of bumpy, hilly, bendy roads, and a few roundabouts in between. So, what have I done this week? Well, I've been in Southampton every day. Um, I slept out every day, apart from Wednesday. Wednesday I went home. Um, so I started work four o'clock in the morning on Monday. Drove two hours to Southampton from Swindon. Got to Southampton then for six o'clock and uh, started my runs. Only supposed to do two runs on a Monday because you've got to count for the two hours it takes to get down so uh, normally you end up only doing two runs. But I got three runs done, so that's good. Um, what we did on Monday, if I remember rightly, was two runs to, uh, where was it? Where was the two runs to? Winchester, yeah. So two runs to Winchester, same place actually. Um, I wasn't expecting the second run. <laughs> But that's where we were, two runs to Winchester. And then we'd done a Newbury run, Travis Perkins and Newbury. 
Now that run wasn't supposed to be done at all. It was I was preloaded to deliver the first thing on Tuesday morning. But I thought, why not try and deliver it now? What's the worst that can happen? They say they don't want it. That's right, I go park up around the corner. That's what I was thinking. So I uh, went to Newbury, managed to deliver it, got it offloaded, and then I parked up 12 minutes around the corner into a, in a shower garage, thanks to the HGV training, the uh, HGV uh, parking website. And um, yeah, like I said, it's only 12 minutes around the corner. 12 minutes from where I needed to drop off, so I, I always planned on parking there, whether I could drop off or not. And I wouldn't have known about that place unless it was for that website, so that was good. Uh, and then Tuesday morning we did a Basingstoke, Eastleigh and a Portsmouth. Um, I'd never gone to Portsmouth before, but I was in Portsmouth on Tuesday. Quite a nice little city that is. Reminded me of Bristol, but with water around it. <laughs> So um, there was one particular roundabout I passed and had like loads of sea stuff. So I had like a, one of those buoyant things, those big red things, and an anchor, and I think even maybe part of a ship. So it's quite cool seeing that. So that was Tuesday. And then, so I slept in Southampton Monday and Tuesday night. Well, Monday night I slept in Newbury, Tuesday night I slept in Southampton. Uh, and then it was Wednesday. Wednesday was a day where I should have done three runs, but I only managed to do two runs, plus get preloaded. So I ended up doing another Bates and Stoke, and then a local run to Southampton. That local run to Southampton was a Selco, yeah, Selco in Southampton. I was there an hour before they even contemplated tipping me, and then they tipped me after an hour, and I was there for probably another hour and a half, quite slow. And it absolutely pissed it down. Uh, it, I got absolutely soaked, got drenched. My clothes were ruined. I need to. I needed to get. Um, well, when, when it was raining, I was, I was just there in my waterproof coat, which is fine. But my trousers aren't waterproof, and all I could think about was I need some waterproof pullovers. So I need to invest in a pair of them at some point. So that was cool. And then I uh, got preloaded. Um, Wednesday to go to Winnish in Reading. There's a, a rival garden centre, but they wouldn't tip me until well, I needed to be there before four o'clock. And my sat nav was saying I'd be there at half past four, quarter to five. So I ended up going straight back to the yard instead of delivering that on Wednesday. So I went home Wednesday, slept um, in my own bed, um, and then went back to work. Thursday morning, uh, and because I because I was dropping off Thursday morning in winter, so I didn't actually need to be there until half seven. So I decided I'd be there at seven o'clock, which mean, meant I didn't need to leave my yard until six o'clock. So it's quite a late start for me, um, well recently anyway. So um, yeah, so I delivered went to winter in Reading, and then. One of the worst things that could possibly happen, and if you like my Facebook page, you already know about this. Uh, and if you don't like my Facebook page, now this is why you should go like my Facebook page because I'm always posting pictures and videos and what I'm getting up to on my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Luke Seed and HTV. Uh, anyway, if you do like me on Facebook, you already know what happened in Winnerch and Reading. I got stuck. I thought I'd be clever because I turned up before anyone else got there. I thought I'd be clever and I'd get myself in a position ready to be tipped and I sort of worked out where I needed to go and I thought ah right I'll probably reverse up there and then drive on out on out so I thought I'll get myself ready and I'll turn around now ready to reverse in when I open the gate so that's what I proceeded to do and the only way I can sort of describe this is uh, imagine the letter V uh, I come down on the right hand side of the V and at the bottom of the V that's where I turn around and then you sort of face up towards the left hand side of the V and then ultimately you would then reverse straight back. Well, it was a gravel track and then on either side of the gravel track there was grass. So I decided to turn around and for whatever reason I don't know, but I decided to put my front wheels on the grass. Um, and as I put my front wheels on the grass and I was on gravel and I was doing a sharp turn with the lift axle down, it doesn't turn very well and it sort of almost goes straight. So it, it just pushed me onto the grass. Um, and I could feel myself slowing down and I was like, no, 
No, and I sort of wish I was vlogging at the time because I knew it was happening, but I was kind of wishing it wouldn't happen. Um, but yeah, ultimately I got stuck. Um, didn't dig a hole or anything, it was just I was pulling 44 tonnes worth of weight and my wheels were just spinning on grass. Um, so yeah, that really annoyed me and I, I put on my Facebook page, if anyone is local and can come rescue me, please come. No one did, so thank you very much for that. Not a single person came to help. <laughs> Plenty of you offered to help, but we're too far away. Well, that's not good enough, I'm afraid. You should have been at my beck and call. <laughs> uh, never mind, I got out in the end. What, what happened was, um, I was there for a total of three hours in the end. And even though I wasn't actually in the place where they tip, uh, the boss said to the forklift driver, just try and take as many bags off as you can where he is. So um, we, we got most of the bags off the back, three quarters off the back in the end. It took quite a while because he had quite a long way to drive and it was one of those forklifts that were limited. But in the end, um, we got three quarters off and I think I only had something like eight bags left, maybe seven, eight bags left on, on the front of the, of the trailer. Um, so what of it being lighter, I thought, you know, give it another go and see if I can get out. Didn't work, still couldn't get out. I tried all sort of combinations of diff lock and mid axle down and I got, I went and asked for a bag of gravel. They had a split bag of gravel which they couldn't sell. So I said to mind if I use it, um, sort of put it down in between the wheels, just try and get myself some more grip. Nothing worked, nothing at all. So yeah, bit annoying, called the boss multiple times, explaining to him I couldn't get out. Um, and did you know it costs about a grand to get a, a recovery truck out? That's well expensive, isn't it? A grand. So yeah, the boss wasn't really that happy, I don't think. But in the end, uh, I got out because I said to the forklift driver, just try and pull me out. If you can't get me out, then you can't get me out. But at least we tried. Uh, and it worked, got me out. So I don't think it would have worked if I was loaded. But like I said, I wasn't, Dig I wasn't actually in a hole, not really. I was towards the end, but when I first got stuck, I wasn't. I was just spinning on the grass. So all I needed was that little extra bit of pull and it would have been fine. As I was sort of spinning, when the torque was low, I'd move forward a little bit and then it just start spinning. So I'd, I'd move forward like 30 centimeters and then it would just spin. But yeah, that was a bit of a nightmare. Wednesday morning, got stuck. That ultimately then put me back for the rest of the day. Thursday morning, by the way, not Wednesday, Thursday. Yesterday, in fact. Yeah, that then ultimately put me back for the rest of the day. So I only managed to get one extra run done that day, uh, which was to Andover. So I went to Andover and done that, which is not actually far away from where, where we're based in Swindon, not too far away. And then it was a case of coming back to Southampton on Thursday to preload for this morning. But there was an accident on the M3, one of the lanes were closed, um, so it put me behind again, and I didn't get back to Southampton to about half past five. So I just parked up for the night, half past five, under that itching bridge. And then started again this morning. Uh, this morning I got preloaded at six, well, no, I didn't get preloaded. I went into to the office at six o'clock the hub got uh, loaded to go to Salisbury where um, I got tipped and then went back to Southampton to get loaded again to go to this place I'm going now which is I don't really know where I'm going Fran Franchinghampton or something enough room to make it through you're gonna have to wait there while I go over this bridge, matey boy. Thank you very much. Right, so we've got a few tight lanes by the looks of it. Tight, tight corners. So yeah, now you're up to date. That's that's what I've been doing all all week. Three nights out, one night at home. Um, scheduled to do Monday to Wednesday here as well in Southampton. I don't know what I'm doing next week at the end. Thursday, Friday. Not sure yet. Boss said I won't be in Southampton get someone else to do it but I do not know I do not know what the plan is all I know is today like I said it's 20 past 12 now I'm gonna be there in less than 10 minutes um, all I know is that today if they hurry up and tip me here 
I will be back in the yard relatively early, give the lorry a quick wash, just a quick one, um, so I can go home, spend some time with the kids, and then pop back into work tomorrow, give the lorry a proper wash, and uh, enjoy the rest of my weekend. That's the plan. That's the plan, Batman. That's the plan. But yeah, thank you for everyone who um, so valiantly um, offered to come and help me on Thursday morning. Which is not many of you. <laughs> it's all cool. We've got out in the end. It's fine. Three miles to go, ladies and gentlemen. Three more miles and then we will be at Travis Perkins. I was thinking earlier, I said I mentioned earlier that Travis Perkins are quite hot on um, health and safety. And also they're normally quite quick tipping you as well. But it's not just that. They're normally quite good with facilities as well. Like... They normally offer you a drink, normally, not always. So, um, yeah, it's all good, but I don't, I'm one of those weird people that don't drink hot drinks. I don't drink tea, I don't drink coffee. I always get asked why I don't drink tea or coffee, and in my mind, I'm like, well, why do you drink tea and coffee? Why would you want a hot drink that you can't drink until it cools down? What's the point? That's the way I see it. What's the point of going, do you know what I mean? Like giving it a little sip. Like if I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, I want to drink. I don't want to be fighting my drink. I just want to drink, do you know what I mean? So that's why I don't have hot beverages. Only the nice cool ones. Maybe a beer every now and then, but like I said earlier, I don't really drink that often. Uh, those road signs there says road closed. I know that from my tip and days. Oh, it will say uh, construction access. Uh, Oh no, completely wrong, new roundabout. There's me trying to be all clever, didn't work, new roundabout ahead. When my sat-nav says there's a roundabout up ahead, three quarters. Unless it's just round the corner. Oh, it is just round the corner. New roundabout. You can tell that because it's got a fresh time out here, or fresh-ish. Fresh-ish. This also looks familiar. Why does this look familiar? The more you sort of travel and go around places, the more you sort of remember and sort of put two and two together and you like, you can go up and down a road every day if you like, and then the next day you'll go a different way and join up to that same road. And you're like, oh. I, when I first started driving, I really didn't have much sort of intelligence and sort of awareness of the layout of the roads and where I was or anything like that and I still don't to some extent like I don't know where I'm going fresh, fresh, fresh in the animal. I don't know I've got a clue where I'm going I can't pronounce it it's not an easy word to pronounce where am I going go straight over at this roundabout that's what I do now We are going to Finch, Finch, Finchampstead. Why can't I say it? Finchampstead, Finch, Finchampstead. I can't say it. Fin, Finchampstead. That's where I'm going. Finchampstead, Finchampstead. That's where I'm going. Travis Perkins, Finchampstead. Fit. Oh. Do you know what? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't care what it's called. I'm just going there. When I get, when I see a road sign, you'll uh, be able to see it. Finch Hampstead. Mind you, we're not probably going to see a road sign because we're only a mile away now. So if we we're going to see a road sign, we would have seen it by now. Why am I going down here then? That looks like quite a tight turn. Mind my trailer. Oh, 
grazed the curve, that's all. Just grazed it. So we're nearly here now, just, just down the road, around the corner. Time flies when you're chatting. Right. I've got a, uh, got a mount set up here that I'm hoping to put on the back of the trailer. So um, hopefully you can see it, me getting loaded. Hopefully. Not promising anything, but hopefully you will. Is he turning left? I shall let you come onto my side of the road. There's a, a woman diving. Who did not say thank you, you miserable biatch. I hope you saw that. I stopped and gave way to my right, 200 yards away from where I actually needed to. And she didn't even say thank you. That's the sort of road users that annoy me. I'm starting to think, if I should, like, starting to wonder if I should have come in this way. Uh, don't say road closed, don't say road closed. Works accessed. Because the uh, Google Maps were telling me to go in the other way, but my HGV sat nav was telling me to come in this way. And when registering, start looking at you, then you know you're not supposed to be down places. <laughs> Right, so it should be just down here on the left-hand side. A relatively concealed entrance, I believe. Uh, uh, what does that say? Road ahead closed. Access only. Well, I do need access, don't I? Access to Travis Perkins. It better not be closed just before Travis Perkins. Oh no, it's fine. Here we go. I need to be on the left, uh, I need to be on the right hand side of the road to get in. Find your gear, find your gear, come on. Good girl. On the maps, this looked a lot bigger. Looked like you'd get a truck down here and a car. Not so much the case. I'm hoping there's no truck in here, I really am. Uh, we look all right. Can't see a truck. Where do I park though, is the question. That's that red sign I was talking about, do not move. Well, it looks like I need to be loaded here, or tipped here rather. So, I'll make an acquaintance and I will hopefully see you in a second with footage on the back. I'm here just to treat you right You're the reason I'm alive You're the only pain I can endure But when you're not here You're my dream, but I just wanna Yeah, I just wanna Done. Let's rock and roll. Now we've got to do a complete U-turn in this yard apparently. So uh could be fun. No cars in the yard, so that's good. I'm actually gonna take my seat back off a second just so I got a bit more flexibility. 
Ah, he's a man in the system. I see he's just gone down. I'm hoping I'm not going to hit the building. Just build some air up quickly. So we've still got the uh, GoPro on the back. So you're going to see some reversing and driving out. Right, let's try that. Excellente. Can't see if I'm fully straight or not. Yeah, all right. Cheers, mate. Right. So now we've got to do a complete U-turn. Uh, I'm 23 steps long. The yard is 23 steps wide. So let's hope for the best. Four luck. Ah, loads of space. What am I worrying about? Cheers. Loads of room. This is this bit's tighter. Don't want to uh, hit the lorry with my trailer. Yeah, made it. Right, so we're on our way out now. And we're gonna uh, head straight back to the yard. We're now done for the day. So that's good. Uh, like I said, I had the dash cam on the back with the GoPro on the back. So um, hopefully there's a bit of footage of me getting unloaded, which is quite cool. to a complete stop. I'm not going to do a complete stop. Enough to have a leak. Right, so this turn here is quite sharp. So it's quite sharp on the way in, wasn't it? All clear left. All clear right. Let's go, go, go. There we are. Get a crack a lack in. Right, so we are 55 miles away from our yard. One hour and 18 minutes drive, according to the old twat nav here. Um, and hopefully I'm gonna be in the yard for three o'clock, according to this, five to three. Okay, I'll slow down for you. Um, so yeah, be in the yard by three. I'm willing to bet my arm and my leg that the jet wash is going to be packed and loads of people are going to be wanting to use it because obviously um, I work for JK Transport who operate out of another company, their yard, and that company I used to work for. So I know the yard and I know everyone there, it's just um, all in all there's like 20, 30 trucks, something like that and everyone's going to want to wash their truck on a Friday afternoon and there's only one wash. So um, I, I want to wash the lorry when I get back, but I don't want to wait to have to wash the lorry. I'd rather just come in tomorrow. I'm coming in tomorrow anyway to wash it. So I'd rather just come in tomorrow and do the whole lot tomorrow. It's just right now, it is filthy at the back where I've had like sand and gravel and it's been raining. It sort of seeped through. And um, because it's seeped through, it's gone all over the wheel arches and the number plate and the lights. Well, I've cleaned the number plate and lights, but obviously it's just the rest of it is just really dirty. And um, yeah, I mean, this is just a rental truck, but if it was a proper done up truck, um, my boss 
wouldn't be too happy, I don't think. Because they're, they're smart trucks, they, they need to be cleaned. So I need to clean this ideally tonight, just to pre-wash, just so it doesn't look so bad. And then give it a proper wash tomorrow, inside and out. <clears throat> but we'll see when we get there. Depends uh, how many people are in the yard already when we get there. But like I said, I suspect there'll be a lot of people There'll be quite a few. Let's go around here. Anyway, so that's going to conclude today's video. I've got no idea how long it is. Hopefully it's adequate length, that's what she said. But yeah, thanks for watching and um, hopefully you enjoyed it. Until next time, drive safe. Uh, thank you very much. Bye bye.